Hi, everyone. This is uh, E. David Crawford, Editor-in-Chief of Grand Rounds in Urology. Joining me is Dr. Dan Petrock from Yale University. Dan is a medical oncologist and a world leader in urologic oncology, and in particular in bladder cancer. Dan, just uh, recently you published an article in the prestigious New England Journal of Medicine, and I'm wondering if you could just highlight this for our listeners. Thanks. Thank you, David. It's always a pleasure to talk uh, for Grand Rounds in Urology. So we have a new class of drugs that have been approved for metastatic urothelial carcinoma. And the best way to describe them is that they are smart bombs. In other words, what they do is they deliver chemotherapy directly to the target. So Nectin-4 is a protein, it's an adhesion molecule that's expressed in about uh, 90% of urothelial carcinoma specimens. And uh, what has been done is Nectin-4 has been linked, an antibody to Nectin-4 has been linked to a chemotherapeutic agent called MMAE, which is very, very similar to what we see with taxanes. Uh, it's an antitubulin agent. And we started work with this drug back in 2012. Uh, it is uh, in, in phase one. And we were impressed with some of the responses that we had seen in patients who had received checkpoint therapy, as well as patients who did not receive checkpoint therapy. 40% response rate, which is, I think, again, impressive as a single agent in patients who've had multiple lines of prior treatment. So a trial was performed called EV201, which was a phase two study, which evaluated patients with metastatic urothelial carcinoma who had, had previously been treated with either a platinum-based chemotherapy or a checkpoint inhibitor. And uh, we saw that there was about a 40% response rate again. This led to the accelerated approval of Infortimab for patients who had been treated with either of those particular agents. Part of the process that goes on with the FDA for accelerated approval involves the fact that you have to confirm the results of the phase two trial with a phase three study. That's what the subject of the New England Journal of Medicine article was, the EV301 study, which randomized patients to receive either in Fortimavidotin, uh, this is given weekly for three out of four weeks at 1.25 milligrams per kilogram, and that was compared to investigators' choice chemotherapy, which could have been a taxane, uh, in Europe, it was vinflunine, uh, but uh, but again, standard chemotherapy was in the uh, in the experiment with the control arm. What was found was that there was a significant improvement in overall survival in favor of infortimab. Uh, it was about five months, and the hazard ratio was 0 0.7. There was an improvement in progression-free survival as well. And the objective response rate was exactly the same as what we saw in phase one and phase two, 40%. What I think is particularly interesting about this drug is that the responses are conserved across all types of metastases. For example, we've often had trouble treating liver metastases in the past. Well, with this drug, the response rate's about 40%, uh, which again, for a third line agent, I think is fairly remarkable. Now, there are side effects that were observed in the study. In the phase three trial, there was more rash. In the infortimab arm, there was also more neuropathy. Uh, we have to carefully monitor for sensory neuropathy with our patients and adjust dosages accordingly or delay doses uh, because uh, this can be a long-term problem, particularly in patients who are responding. In the chemotherapy arm, there was actually a higher rate of neutropenia uh, than there was with infortimab as well as uh, febrile neutropenia was 6% in chemotherapy, 1% for infortimab and dotin. So in conclusion, EV301 uh, basically confirmed the phase one and phase two data that was seen with infortimab and dotin in metastatic urothelial carcinoma. This is a standard treatment now for, for patients tr with this particular disease. Congratulations, Dan. That uh, is really kind of neat to see a new novel therapy like this uh, progress so quickly and uh, and uh, get uh, get uh, off the shelves and approved. Any any plans to move this earlier in the disease? In any um, any studies now? Well, there there are a number of different studies that are going on right now looking at this, this uh, drug earlier in, uh, in urothelial carcinoma. For example, one of the unmet medical needs right now is 
a treatment for patients who are platinum ineligible and who have uh, non -muscle, have muscle invasive bladder cancers. So there are trials that are looking at neoadjuvant therapy. There's a fascinating combination trial that's going on right now uh, with infortimab combined with pembrolizumab. And uh, the initial results had been quite striking uh, with uh, a, a median survival from the phase one study that's not yet been reached and a randomized phase two that is going on that's comparing infortimab plus pembrolizumab versus infortimab alone, hopefully getting this, showing results to get this approved as a uh, first line agent for those patients who are platinum ineligible. So there are numerous trials that are moving this up front, both in the neoadjuvant as well as in the metastatic setting. Right. Th thanks for sharing this information. We'll uh, stay in touch and see how these trials evolve and have a good day. Thank you, David.